Ismail, good morning, Miss Joyce Brewer. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Wow, we're just excited to have you on a beautiful Friday. It's the 15th of the month, and we're jacked up excited. Half the month is gone. The 15th of May. Wow, who to thunk it? Hey, listen, we are excited because we've got a great call lined up today. Mr. Nelson is going to share with us what to say and what not to say and how to, how to show AC in the right light. Some of you are guests on the call of brand new IBOs. We want to thank you so much for the time's sake. I'm not going to shout out a whole bunch of names, but I want to thank Mr. Nelson being on here. Who is Mr. Nelson? Well, he's an entrepreneur. Been with AC in 25, almost 27 years, excuse me. Uh, he's, a, he's a thought leader. He's a community leader. He's a father. He is a mentor to so many. And, uh, and I tell you what, he's uh, one of the first uh, senior vice presidents that has been in ACN as long as he has been. He was here when I got over here uh, and, and he's got several, several trips we've been on together with the co-founders ACN. Hangs out at Nectar Island with Mr. Richard Branson, uh, Les Brown. It was at his international uh, promotion. Uh, Marvin Sapps, gospel singer. Man, he brought the house down. So that's who you're in front of today. We're so excited to come off sabbatical and today we're so privileged to have him. And I'm going to invite him back tonight to come on our call at 6 o'clock for our Ask Al when everybody bring their libation on tonight at 6 o'clock on this number because we always have a happy hour, our happy hour tonight. So without further ado, everybody, I'm put your hands up none other than the one and only Mr. Nelson. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Let's all give him a hand, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. A lot of love out there for you. Oh, man, that's my honor to be here, brother. How have you been? What are we talking about? Is this leadership or man, is it presentation? Man, I'm Hey, hey, before I get started, there's a young man whose birthday today, a dear friend of mine, you guys might have heard of him. He lives in Las Wages. He's a <laughs> handsome, debonair gentleman. Uh, uh, Mr., uh, Mr., I call him uh, Big B, but Mr. Brian Baker, today is his birthday, everybody. Can we give and show Mr. Brian Baker, regional director, some love out there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir Mr. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Man, I want an RD for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so just to let everybody know, uh, today is his birthday, and I will be cooking him lunch at my house today at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Yeah, 1 o'clock or 12 o'clock, I've got a fabulous meal. I'm going to be personally cooking. I'm going to throw down some uh, Korean food, some Korean marinade on some on some catfish and all the Korean sides. It's going to be a – I love their – I love their – oh, yeah, look at Mr. Baker's face. So you, you think he could cook. He know, Can I cook Mr. Baker? He knows I can throw down. It's, 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 always a, it's always a duel. It's always a duel. Well, anyway, let's get to the man of the hour right now. Let's give Mr. Nelson a hand one more time and bring up Mr. Nelson. And I just can't wait to hear what to do. How do you see in the right way and the wrong way? So without further ado, sir, it's all yours. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I want to make, I want to make sure <laughs> that I don't say anything wrong on the first day I come back and the first conversation I have in this company. So the first thing I want to understand, is this a training call? This is, Yes, yes, we could call that because everybody's IBOs on here. Okay, so everybody's an IBO, yes? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody's an IBO. <laughs> okay. For anybody in the company and administration, this is an IBO only all call. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sign have to sign off on that one. All right, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so I want to share with you. Um Something I've been in deep discussions with. There's, there's really only, um, so those that are in the company, there's really only outside of my own organization, I've been blessed to build uh, five people that I trust emphatically in this company. Obviously, Mr. Al Thomas is one of them. And the other four are giants, as well as Mr. Thomas. And so one of them being Mr. Artie Napolitano. So I'm gonna put the disclaimer just in case something comes up and this will make sense when I finish the conversation. I didn't come up with this, Artie sent it to me. <laughs> okay, But I wanna share something because we have been uh, in the last few days in discussion about the best and most effective way of being able to share 
uh, the up. Now I'm looking over here because I moved you guys to the right. That's why you guys see me looking over here and I have over here what I want you guys to see. Uh, but I want you guys to hear this. It's a minute and 51 seconds. It's going to play into the rest of my conversation. I'm going to share my screen. I want you guys to see this real quick. And let me do this and this. And I want you guys to hear this. And for it has fundamentally changed the way many of us work. And now for some, the change could be permanent. Here's Jill Lane Kent. For millions, the reality of working from home could be permanent. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey telling his employees they can work remotely forever from anywhere. As many industries grapple with how to redesign office space to minimize health risks, the historic economic crisis is also forcing companies to cut costs, potentially putting expensive real estate on the chopping block. NBC's Jacob Ward. Bay Area tech companies were among the very first in the nation to send their people home. And Google and Facebook now say that their employees will mostly work remote for the rest of the year. Some of New York's biggest tenants, Barclays and J.P. Morgan Chase, say they may not bring all employees back to the office at the same time. Austin-based Dell says more than half of its 160,000 staffers may never return to their desks. Emptier offices across the country will have a devastating ripple effect on local businesses. Many restaurants and bars rely on the weekday lunch lunch and crowds at happy hour. Floors count on those big corporate orders and that bouquet on the way home. Even parking garages where business depends on commuters showing up to the office. We got people not working from home. Yeah, we, we got everything to drop. While not every worker has the luxury of working from home, those who do could save money and time. The average commute adds up to 22 work days a year, and you'd save up to $4,000 annually on that commute. Work clothing, dry cleaning, and yes, even coffee. For companies, it saves money, it increases productivity, it increases agility. And for the planet, we just cannot deny what this has done in a very short period of time. Redefining life and work at home sweet home. Jolene Kent, NBC News, Los Angeles. Now, I share that so that everybody can have a perspective. What we are not to say, the three things that I'm very clear uh, to not speak on, is number one, financial claims. Um, it's an illusion. You got to understand the FTC, the Federal Trade Commissions, are on a war and a hunt to bring down companies within our industry. It's no different than any other industry. But you got to be very, very careful not to give a person the illusion of being able to make money. It's very clear to me that you can't speak on what even you have made or accomplished. Now, why is that? Just because you go to the gym and you look like Brian Baker at 21 years old doesn't mean that if you get a membership to his gym that you're going to look like him. And so it is a false claim to make someone to believe that if you go to my gym and you and I coach you, that even the possibility that you can come out looking like me is possible. Because unless you put in the sweat equity, the work and the tears that someone that takes care of their body does, you're never gonna have the results that you're looking for. And see, that's the piece that's missing is people don't tell them the price. And as a wealth coach outside of ACN, my first question when I sit down with a person is, okay, so we understand that you want to make 100000 200000 a million, gazillion dollars, whatever it is you want to make. Financial relief, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month. That's great. The first question I want to know is what are you willing to give up to get what you want? You might want to write that question down. You want an amazing relationship with your man? What are you willing to give up to make that happen? You want the body of life? You, what are you willing to give up for that, for that, you know, for that to happen? You, know, you want to be able to look beautiful? You want amazing skin? What are you going to give up? Are you going to drink water and stop drinking soda? You know, what is it? What price? And that's one of the things I believe is the biggest thing and, and, and fallout in our industry is that people do not establish. They, everybody establishes what they want. Very few people establish what price they're willing to pay, pay to get it. That needs to become part of your narrative. Okay, let's establish why, why you're here. I do want to get to your why. Well, I want to walk off my job. I get that. Uh, you know, I want to be able to just replace my income. I get that. I, I, I need some financial relief. I get that. 
You know, I want to get my husband off his job. I get that. I want to travel the world. I, I get that. I want materialistic things. I get that. I just want a peace of mind. I get that. Now, let's establish what price you're willing to pay to make that happen. Because we really don't have a conversation until I know everybody wants to go to heaven. Very few people want to die. So you sit up there and you want all these things. Let's establish your why. I get your why. I need to know that that why hurts bad enough that you've established the price you're willing to pay. So, and when we're talking about financial claims specifically, that is something you do not want to do. You don't want to show financial claims. You don't want to lead a person in any way because that has been a bear trap. In fact, if I can, it was Mr. Aaron Burt. It shared this so that you guys are very clear about what I'm talking about. I want to share with you because this came across the board to me immediately in my getting my hand slapped in the company so people are clear. This came out on, and I'll send it over to Al, April 24th. FTC sends warning letters to multi level marketing. Now, if anybody knows anything about running a company, this is probably the most fearful thing our founders are scared of, and rightfully so, because it has protected our company for over 27 years. So we may not agree or even like some of the things, policies, and procedures they put in place, but they have saved our opportunity that has changed thousands upon thousands upon thousands of lives because of, I think a person that is, has no fear of things, I just had this conversation with a mentoring someone last night, it's like, don't let your ego get you killed. When you think that you can take on a bear and you over, over, overreach your power and your potential, your human potential, because you just want to be the giant, this right here is what has taken down Every, every company I know. So in here, I just want you guys to see it. It says, FTC sends warning letters to multi-level marketing regarding health earnings claims uh, claimed, uh, and earning claims they, they or their participants are making related to coronavirus. Once you get on this blacklist, they come to take your company down. I'm going to read it. It says, the Federal Trade FTC today announced it has 10 letters warning MLK company. What that means is we're coming for you to take you down. That's not just a warning. That means you're on their list to remove and, and address claims they or their participa participants are making about the product's ability to treat or prevent coronavirus disease or about the earnings people who have recently lost income can make or both. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, there, are currently, uh, uh, there currently are no products that are scientifically proven to treat or prevent the virus. Now, don't just think this is about the virus. There's three titles here, and I'll send it over to Al. If you guys like it, if you have my access, you can send it. It's, it's letting you know, here are the three, both health and earning claims. They are separate entities. It's not just about coronavirus. It's about financial claims. Don't, whatever, Terrera International, Prove It, which is a good product, Total Life Change. I know people in all these companies. Tronat, Modera, Arbonne, which is a really good company, been around for years, earning claims. ID Life, It Works Marketing, Rodan and Fields, which I know some of the top dermatologists have used their products, and Zervita, Health Claims. So they've separated, they got one with both, they got one with just earning claims, and they got one with just health claims. And this came out at the very end of last month. Now, why do I share all that with you? Because I started out with making sure that you were clear about financial claims and not claiming and putting up there and showing whether you got a $100 check or a $500 check, and it's your language. And it's one of the things that I really pride myself on in the, in the 25 years plus that I've been in this game. When you decide, you got to understand the distinction between an amateur and a professional. If you're going to do this, you need to become a professional or not do it. It's not a hobby. And a professional does not mean that you have to do this full time. It means that even on a part-time basis, I work this on a full-time mentality. It means that I've treated this business like $100,000 I put in when I first started this business. I got a set of business cards here. If anyone's ever seen my business card, and I know Mr. Bacon and a few others. This box here, just for my business cards, 
cost me $1,300. How much are you investing in your, this is just my business cards. You worried about $200, $199, $499? Just for one quarter of business cards cost me for my, for my personal brand of who I am as an individual in ACN, in this industry, cost me $1,200, $1,300, not including shipping. How much are you invested in your business? No, I didn't do this when I became an SVP. I've been doing this when I started and I didn't have any money. One of the greatest statements you ever learned about, your, about becoming an entrepreneur, if, you get, if you're doing something that you, that you can't pay for is when you have established that you're an entrepreneur. No entrepreneur is doing something that they have the money for. If you have the money for it, it's not a business. Because <laughs> an entrepreneur is, is, con is constantly expanding and takes on that which they don't know how it's gonna manifest, how it's gonna happen. See, it's the difference of the 10 and the 90%. 90% fail because they want all the information first. Many of you are overthinking in your head. You're trying to figure it out, thinking there's some magic sauce, trying to think that there's some way of being able to do this business. And I just wanna to go to Mr. Al Thomas. I just wanna to go to Byron Nelson. I wanna to go to whoever it is that has the information. The system is in place. Our job is, our job is not to teach you what's in the system, but how to use the system. And we can't teach you how to use the system if you aren't already using it to make mistakes. Is, is anybody, yeah, yeah, are you guys getting this? Because I need you to understand, if you look at the best doctor, if you look at the best attorney, who's the best attorney you know? Who's the best doctor you know? Who's the best plumber you know? Who's the best tennis player you know? Who's the best golfer you know? Who's the best basketball player you know? Who's the best, all of these different things. Who's the best? I'll tell you who the best is. You know who the best is? And if this thing does not, it's irritating. Can you guys still hear me clearly as I turn this down? Am I coming through clear? Thank you. Who is the best in whatever you have an affinity for? I'll tell you who the best is. When you look at a golfer, or if you look at a basketball game or a football game, or if you look at a doctor, or if you look at an attorney, the best one that we all know is the one who makes the least amount of mistakes, the least amount of errors. Do you want a big fancy doctor who knows, oh, they got a big show, or you want somebody who's gonna actually get the job done and save your life in the cardiac arrest? or someone who's a neurologist, who's real fancy, God, I, I just won't put my spin on it, I wonder, or somebody who's gonna go in there and fix your brain. The best golfer, when they show whoever's winning, it's who's made the least amount of errors. And how did they get there? They made the most errors to know what not to do and learn from every error on the table. So you playing perfectionist, waiting to get everything right in the perfect circumstance, in the perfect environment, with the perfect, well, I just want to get the right language before I talk to this person. Well, I just want to understand what to say before I talk to this person. Well, I just want to, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm at every training, I'm at every briefing for you to show up three months later and say, I haven't made any money. That's why I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. You know, and I got to think of, that's just, the people that succeed in this game are the ones that go excuse me, ladies, forgive my terminology, balls to the wall. The 90% that fail want the information. The 10% that succeed, they made a decision first and the how-to comes. You never had a baby before. For the ladies on here, you, you, you have the first baby. What are you going to do? Get all the information before you get pregnant? No, you got pregnant. And you figure it out in the trimesters in the morning sicknesses, in the nine months of how to create the environment, how to make sure you bring your attitude to a calm when people are getting you angry, how to get rid of the alcohol, how to not be smoking if you're smart, it, it, you know, how to be able to eat the right foods. And, and then in turn, there's a whole lot of different things from stretch marks on the outcome, but the pain is worth the gain on the outcome. On the inside, you're going through everything you have to go through of something that was what? Uncomfortable. See, my point is, it's gonna be uncomfortable anyway. You're birthing a dream. You're leveraging ACN to birth your dream of freedom, whatever that looks like for you. And it's supposed to be painful. It's not supposed to be easy. You're supposed to get the no's. There is no trickery in this. Well, why don't my, you know, my mom and daddy said no. Yeah, they said no to you a lot of things. Hell, men, you should be used to gotten to the women saying no to you. They've been saying no to you since you started trying to ask a woman out for getting some. What the hell is wrong with y'all? 
And women, you haven't gotten the man you wanted 90% of your life until you found your husband, if you were lucky enough to do that. So you got turned down many times. So what, what is this about rejection? I just, I don't know what I'm saying. You're in the crawl phase. You're in the nuance. Is anybody getting, just nod your head if I'm making sense here? All right. You got to learn to get excited about what you're giving birth to in the term, in, in, in carrying the term of this child of ACA. And you're going to have to protect it. We want to stay away from financial claims. You don't want to be taking pictures. I mean, I, I never was that person anyway. Unfortunately, that wasn't mine. But I do scream about lifestyles because this game has provided me a specific lifestyle. It has provided Al Thomas a specific lifestyle. I really dislike, it has nothing to do with ACN. I really dislike that it has been taken to the point that it has been abused because myself, Mr. Al Thomas, anybody who's been around this game past two decades understands we build our business on vision. And the vision is what it has, what this industry has provided for us. And sad enough, we can't talk about that because it's been abused. And then in turn, you have the attorneys and everybody. I mean, I don't even know. I have to completely reinvent myself to create a vision because vision is still a, the major component of this game. But I have to completely reinvent myself to not market and sell the benefits and the advantages of what this business and this industry has blessed me with. Because it's... It, can you make millions? Yes. Can you say it? No. Can, can you retire? Yes. Can you walk away with, uh, you know, five, six, seven, eight vacations? Yes. Can, can you retire your parents? Yes. But can you say it? No. Because that's, that's an anomaly. You know, people like the ones on this call, myself, Al, you don't know you're weird until you find out there's very few people that are willing to do what you're willing to do. Like, I, I just don't get why people don't get you know, time, I call them birth lines. I don't create deadlines. I create birth lines. That means I'm going to finish ETL to give me birth to a new income. I'm going to finish RD to give me birth to a new income. I'm finishing RBP to give me birth to a new income. I believe language is the most powerful thing that you can utilize. Learning how to be able to say, I'm involved. No, you aren't involved. Involved means that you aren't committed. I want to share. Why not I invite you to participate in something that is going to recreate my life? It's a very powerful conversation. I haven't had a chance to catch up with you, Belinda. Uh, Dahlia, I haven't, uh, Delilah, I haven't had a chance to catch up with you for, you know, a couple of months. I invite you to be able to just participate in a conversation, have a virtual coffee, you know, and be able to just come up with some ideas of what this is going to look like coming into a new season. I mean, you can have whatever kind is anybody getting that so far? It's just an invitation. I have no attachment to you receiving or you turning down my invitation. Master the art of an invitation. Not, oh, nobody showed up. Nobody got on my Zoom call. Nobody came to my meeting. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. What are you inviting them to? I invite people into my life, not to a business opportunity. Anybody over 25 that has made anything over $40,000 a year knows business opportunity without a specific, without specifying means one of those things. So a business opportunity, he didn't say real estate, business opportunity, he didn't say investment fund, and business opportunity, he didn't talk about hedge fund, business opportunity, he didn't talk about, you know, uh, Forex, futures, commodities, or, you know, uh, stocks. A business opportunity. He was not specific. The only thing that's left is a pyramid. What the hell are we talking about? Because you're being vague and you're being an amateur because you haven't mastered the language of just inviting them to a conference. People don't follow things, widgets, and gadgets. They follow people. The reason why Mr. Al Thomas's business is phenomenal is because people are following him. Anybody that builds a dynasty is because... If you, if you found a woman or man that you date or in this 21st century, a man and a man, a woman, a woman, whatever the hell you like, whatever, you're, whatever is your flavor, whoever you're in a relationship with, though they asked you over the first meeting, hey, 
you know, Magali, hey, Brittany, you're beautiful. Well, what do you do? We ask what you do. Tosh, what do you do? We ask, but we really don't give a damn. You don't care what they do. What we really are asking is, hey, you know what? Who are you, Luna? Who are you, Magali? I want to know who you are. That's what they're asking. When two people meet and have an interest at a coffee, a drink, around friends, at a gathering, online, they ask, even if you do whatever. I've, I've never done internet dating. I don't know. I don't even understand that. But even if people meet online, right? <laughs> like I have a friend that I just coached, most amazing freaking woman, and she met this guy online, and she's I, and certain people because it's the world we live in, I like millennial world, whatever. And then she's like, he ghosted me. I was like, well, it's kind of easy. You met him in the internet of ghost world. But anyway, all I'm saying is when you first meet somebody, the first question we generally ask a person is, so what do you do? But we really don't care. What we're really asking is, so who the freak are you? And why should I be, why should I be interested in getting to know you further as a person? Hence, if you master the art of being more interested then interesting, then you will win. Finding out and becoming a scientist or even more so a discoverer, an adventure to find out, you know, Tosh, so it, what really interests you? What is it that you really, you know, what, where does your pain, where's the pain in your life? What, what do you mean? If you had to identify one thing in your life that hurts you the most, would it be lack of time, lack of money? Would it be not spending time with your husband? Would it be time not spending? What is it that you, if you could change one thing and you had a magic wand or a genie in a bottle, what would you choose? And if you ask genuinely, being interested in them, because most people just talk from the side of their neck. But if you genuinely are interested in that person and you ask, they will vomit on you. See, that's where the patience of giving birth comes in. The patience of having real conversations comes in. The patience of really caring for someone comes in. I live and die by the code and my family and the business I built, my entire philosophy has been, people don't care what you know unless they know that you care. So taking the time and the pain of not really learning the language, upping your conversation, reading the books on network marketing, Reading. I mean, take how many books have you read? I mean, I'm not just talking about your first year in network marketing. I mean, this is a fraction of my of my. I mean, I can go through. It's one of my good friends. He is a giant in network marketing. His name is Brian Crothers. Do you understand that he started in ACN? <laughs> and this is one of the most powerful books in the industry. I, I mean, it just keeps going on. I don't have one or two. How many books do you have on your shelf on network marketing? To understand you, if you're going to become a doctor or an attorney, there you go, Al. Look at Mr. Al Thomas. If you're going to become a doctor or an attorney, look at his shelves. The first one's easy access. And not, not at the top, all right there. Everything's right there. Everything is right there. Everything is right there. Everything is right there. You can keep going. It's just keep, everything is right there. Everything is right there. You don't become an attorney and make attorney money with having, without having books of, of law in front of you. You don't have books. You don't become a doctor without having medical books all around you. You don't become an accountant without having all kinds of books about becoming an accountant. You want to be, look at that. There you go. Look at that. Shelves and shelves of books. That's what I'm talking about. And of course, all tailored suits come right underneath. You know what he got first? Did he get the tailored suits or did he get the books? What's on top? He got the books and came the tailored suits in a private closet and 400 square feet to be able to house his lifestyle. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. All around there, books on top of books on network. Look at that closet. They came from the, he dressed his closet with the books and it funded the closet. Do you get the picture? Nod your head if you're hearing me. Okay. He didn't go buy all the stuff to fake it until he makes it. And then all of a sudden he says, you know what? I think I'll go buy a book on network marketing. All of that right there. He's surrounded. His environment is conducive for him to become a doctor, which is why he has been able to have so much success in his business. 
How much have you looked at that? It's just, I mean, it just keeps going. This is half of his house. No, that's no, definitely not half of his house. It's the mo most important part of his house. The most used part of his home is where his knowledge lives. Does that make sense? Do you see all that? What are you doing to be a student? Write this down. Of the industry. A student of the industry. Not a student of just ACN. Not just with the, uh, I'm going to a bunch of meetings. I'm on a bunch of Zoom calls. Everything you want to know has already been written. It's already been done. When you have an appetite and you want to bake cakes, like I have a young lady who's, who teaches yoga, well, she got books, she's watching videos, she's waking up, she's taking notes, she got journals. This girl's one of the best I've ever seen. She has, a, and she's, she doesn't even want to do social media. I'm like, the ones that are doing social media don't even know what the hell they're doing. The ones, and like, she's got, and you have to have an insatiable appetite for your why and what you're doing. And I mean, just like an obsessed attitude to know and stop looking like some person's going to come and show you through a training or through a Zoom or through a PBR or through a, a two-hour Saturday training, and you're like, it's just not working. No, you're not working. It works if you work it. It's called net work marketing. Not net, not work. You get the net work. People miss the work. <laughs> How many CDs and tapes are you listening to? I mean, I wish I could pull all my stuff up to show you. I mean, I got cassettes on top of cassettes, on top of VHSs, on top of just CDs. Look at this. This is just, and they're outdated. Look at exactly what Al said. You got, I got cassettes and I got, I got everything. I mean, just, and we don't even use CDs anymore or tapes. Look at what Al's pointing at, tapes and CDs. I didn't just listen to one for some magic dust and, oh, here's a second one. Let me, oh, there's a new series. Just, there you go. You got podcasts, you got all kinds of stuff is what I'm sharing, you guys. This business is everything that you want. I call it the insurance policy against your dreams. Nobody was born and said, you know what, when I grew up, I want to get in network marketing. It's coming. <laughs> but anyone over 25, it didn't even take hold yet. The industry hadn't even taken a hold yet. But now that it's here, it's your insurance policy against your dreams, you guys. So all I want to leave you guys with is don't talk about financial claims. Don't show checks. Don't show your back office. You know, don't, don't, uh, you know, as tempting as it may be, it can cost you everything. It can cost the company. It can cost us all. So that's number one. And number two, financial claims. What I was going to talk about that is what, what, what I meant by what I don't do is I'm not standing in front of a car that I don't own. Don't do that. I see so many people doing that, standing in front of houses, taking pictures in front of this, people standing in front of that. If you don't own it, it's not yours. And even if you do, you don't want to lead people to believe that they can own the plane, the car, the house. Now, if you're getting in your car or if you're actually in the backyard with your kids and you happen to have a palace like Al Thomas does, and they just so happen to fall into, you know, a couple of acres of property and a gourmet cook that's cooking for them, then, you know, it just happens to be in the picture. It's yours. <laughs> but to utilize that as a prop to sell people on the opportunity, not going to work. The company will come and not jeopardize the opportunity of millions for you. You won't even have a, a you won't even have, a, you know, <laughs> you won't have a case. So we don't want to talk about financial claims. We don't want to talk about lifestyles. And I wanted to bring up the COVID while I open with that is because you cannot utilize COVID as a conversation, as a stimulus, that ACN is a stimulus package. You cannot use ACN as a plan B as a stimulus package, or it's going to replace their income, or they're going to be able to walk away from their job, or none of that, none of that conversation. It has to be in the purest form of potential, of possibility, meaning lead their, let them and it really is the best closing ever is for them to close themselves, to present the opportunity and allow them to be able to just find the possibilities for themselves. Does that make sense? Is everybody understanding that conversation, right? And if, you, if, you, if you're uncertain, don't do it. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. If, you. if you have to think twice about it, social media, don't put it up. 
if you need to get if you think you need to get approval for it don't put it up you know and i'm, I'm not even going to tell you to go I, because of just the game that i'm playing in life now i'm not even going to tell you to go find an rvp and svp or a circle of champions because it's a new birthing of a new life for all of us not just in acn but the way we're going to live is a new way of living so the rules are going to constantly change and so I'm going to, I'm even going to put it out that not all the SVPs, not all the COCs and not all the RVPs even know or have a, have a clue as to what they're doing because it's a new life. It's like walking, it's like walking through the Red Sea and you're ending up in Egypt. It's a new land. Nobody even knows what's on the other side of the river. So for, yeah, you're going to have leaders act like they're not that what they're talking about. And all of a sudden you're going to find yourself in hot water because you listened to somebody you thought knew what they were talking about, but they haven't been there either. So at, at, the, at the very least, take it to the source and have it approved if you have to question it all. Now, I don't want to scare you. I just want to caution you to the wind. Protect your baby. <laughs> if you're going to put time into this, energy into this, if you're going to actually, if you really want to make this work, whether you work it on a part-time basis of five to 10 hours a week, or if you work it on a full-time basis to five to 10 hours a day, treat it as if it's your most valuable possession and it's locked up in Al Thomas's safe. And that's pretty valuable. That means you are not showcasing it, you're on showboating it, you're protecting it and you use it when necessary. Does that make sense to everybody? leverage it to the highest hill just just take care of it like it's your baby would you just leave your baby out there and well, i didn't know you didn't know what that the stove was on and now he burnt his hand you left your infant out there on the swing at three years old by un, 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 you know you know not looked after and they just sitting out there swinging i mean what what didn't you know how irresponsible will you be with your business and how responsible will you be to take something that can bless you and your entire family tree at the highest level. So that's my piece for this morning. I pray that it serves you guys well. Uh, for my first day back, of course, Al Thomas is the only person I would talk for because I hadn't planned on talking to nobody. I was up this morning having my coffee and I was like, you text me, you remember the call? No, but I'm on. <laughs> I was like, I'm <laughs> If you can, if you can call me at two o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna show up. So, um, does anybody have any questions? You guys want to open? It? I mean, you you have a question, Tosh? No, we're good. I put it in the chat. Yes, go ahead, love. So, how do we? I'm how sorry, do we I had it down so that sense. Go ahead, talk again. How do we paint the vision then without like overstepping any boundaries? That's a so great question. You... That is a great question. If you if you live within the marketing plan, the plan itself. Possible for me, it's always questions. So, question is if you hit ETL and you got into a position where you could generate this bonus, how would that serve you to know that you're building residual income? I mean, do you have right now we're talking about an additional 50, an additional 100, an additional 500 dollars potentially a week coming to you based on the numbers here, based on the numbers here. Based on the numbers I see here, if you brought in X amount of people, now at RD, if five people came in, you're getting paid $200. So that's an extra $1,000 after they're qualified, making sure that I'm clear. So we put in an hour's worth of work to get five people qualified. We put in an hour's worth of work to present the opportunity. And we put in an hour's worth of work to be able to expose them to the business. So that's three hours for a thousand dollars is that a good wage to you and if we could do that daily we could do that weekly or we could do that monthly and i have the based on the numbers right here if five if you're an rd and a brand new person comes into your organization you're going to earn two hundred dollars after they're qualified well we play big numbers so we don't talk to one person because it's as easy to talk to one person as it is to talk to ten now, no guarantees, but it's roughly a 50% closing ratio for people that see the opportunity. Yeah. One out of every three, I like to say 50% just because I like to, I just want to be conservative. So if we put 10 people on it that see the opportunity, that want an opportunity, 
50% are excited, get in, and we get them qualified, that's five times 200, that's $1,000. I'm up for playing this game with you, Tosh, daily. Now, I just want to know, if we played it daily, because you said you wanted to make an obnoxious amount of money, you want to get up to, you said you need to replace a five-figure income. So five a day, that gives us 5,000 a week, that gives us 20,000 a week, that gives us a 50% failure ratio that even if we fell by 50%, you still were in a position to potentially generate, generating in upwards of $10,000 for the month. Now, the question I would have for you is, are you up for that game? Because that's work, but I'm already working. I just need a partner. Now, that's your upfront money, not including you're going to get paid residual income in upwards of 20% on the customers you're currently acquiring. So the work you're putting in, you're getting paid today and you're getting paid tomorrow for the rest of your life as long as you maintain and retain the customers. Now, the only thing I know that is permanent is change. But what I do know is when people change and utilize a service, they become creatures of habit. How long have you had, and I would ask you, Tosh, how long have you had the service provider for your cell phone? Who are you on right now? Sprint, of course, how long have you been with them for the last 10 years? My point exactly. So this is how you paint your picture. Mm -hmm. Now you can go a little bit deeper one-on-one, two-on-one in, in private conversations, but I'm just saying, just take your time and play with it. It's developing yourself, it's a new skill set. Al? Yeah, one of the things I would also suggest you do, like when I do the one through 10, is say up to 200, because that mm. way they understand they could be an ETL underneath them or something. So that's why I always say up to, you know, you can make 50 up to 200 or, you know, RVP up to 300 or SV, up to, because here again, you want to make sure that if, exactly. you know, you get it right and correctly for the company's sake. Exactly. Yes, Tosh? So even, because in that conversation, we're showing them, we're showing them the money, what it can do. So are we allowed to be like, you know, have them imagine what they want their life to be like? Like you have control and you can recreate your life the way that you want it. Like showing them what's like, how do we. I'm asking you, I'm saying if, what, 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 how much money do you need in order for this to be, be and this, was, this would be me talking to you. How much money do you need in order for this to be worth it for your time? You would say, let's just say $10,000 a month. That has been accomplished. And I'm not going to promise you anything because just because you come to the gym doesn't mean you're going to look good. But I can promise if you put in the work, the time and the energy, these numbers don't lie. We have to make it so simple. I want you to, here's what I want you guys to take away. I want you to imagine the New, York, the, the New York Times. The New York Times is written, I don't know if you guys know this, I think some of you guys are more evolved or in literary and may understand. The New York Times is actually written in second grade English. Wall Street is in fifth grade. Do you know why that is? So that masses can read it. The more intelligent go deeper and see what's not there in the writing. Millionaires, multimillionaires, and billionaires can look at a penny opportunity and figure out how to turn it into millions because it's so simple. If it's too complicated, or if it's at 11th and 12th grade reading, you're going to have a less demographic to be able to market that paper. If your business is leading the person to possibilities that they've never achieved in their life, you're going to lose the ones who truly can maximize the opportunity. You want to bring it down that the masses can see it, hear it, touch it, feel it, taste it, and get involved, and the classes will elevate it by default. They'll see the maximum potential. Yeah. That's how multimillionaires are created, is they see what other people don't see in penny opportunities. They don't need the big vision that's as they get on the court that you create the vision with someone you partner with to really share how big this picture is. But to share a 12th grade picture with a first grader, they aren't going to understand it, appreciate it, or even know what the hell you're talking about. 
to share a million dollar lifestyle with a 60,000 a year income earner is blowing them out of the water. Get, and, and, and here's here would be my lead, because I'm talking to myself, talking to you. This is my first call back. Sorry, you guys. It's probably even over the call. I don't even know. I don't look at a freaking clock. What you want to actually stick with, if you really want to create vision, stick with the word called residual income. Live in that word of residual and the right people will have the appetite for that word by itself, especially during this season. Anyone that has half a brain needs to understand they should and need and want residual income. That screams volume. What would, what would residual income look like for you? I mean, how much do you make right now? I make about $4,000 a month. If you had that in residual income and this season happened, what would your life look like if you had that coming in and we were on quarantine for the rest of our lives? How, how would you feel right now? Freaking phenomenal. You know, yeah. the, the, uh -huh. to, go, to, go along, to go along with that, it's just dumb it down like we've been doing it and then individually talk to them on an individual level. But like you said, just keep it, just read it, keep it simple. They'll catch it without all the fanfare that we think we had to add to it. And then if you talk to them on a one-on-one, -on -one, you can break that down even further. And that's exactly how we should do this. And that's exactly what the company is saying. That's exactly how to do it. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. You're more than welcome. I'm going to tell you guys, you need to create a reset for you. And because this is a leadership call or a training call, I'm just going to tell you, and it may be only three or four or five of you get this. For me, it's been the best 30 days of my life. For those that know what I've been going through, um, a lot of people have, you know, you know called to check and like, are, I'm getting prayers. I'm fine. I'm, I mean, I've been blessed. My residual at $2 a month, I can live off my $2 a month for the next three, four, five months without feeling any pain. So I'm really okay. <laughs> without talking about any money, I get about $2 a month in my residual income since it's being recorded. Just in case the founders might be listening, I make about $2 a month and I was able to spread my $2 a month and I can live off of for about three or four months. I'm really okay. You know, that's what I've been able to generate. <laughs> And it has given me the space and time to be very clear about not just ACN, but about you got to reinvent yourself. You got to redesign yourself. You got to reset your brain. This is so much bigger than a company and industry. It's your life. And if you keep operating on the old school way of who you have been being, you will become an antique, not just in this business, but to everything that you exist for. Is, is, that, is anybody receiving this? Are you guys getting what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, I encourage you, I implore you, take time and just really think about, if you have not, I'm a firm believer, if the results you've gotten, I don't understand how people go two, three, four, five months without getting a check. I've never have been able to understand that and say I'm still in it. That means you were never in it. You know, but the best, the blessing in that conversation for people who live in that boat, you're still active, which means you've been just like waking up a new day, right? You've had a bad life for the last seven days. You can talk about the last seven days or you can wake up knowing you were blessed to design. I call it your future present. Planning with the end in mind. Who do you want to be in the future? Be that right now and it will show up in the next seven days. So who is your future present over the next seven days? You didn't have the results you wanted for the last seven days. Use that as experience. You paid for that information. You paid for that knowledge. You paid for that wisdom of what wasn't work. See, it's not that ACN doesn't work. Your life isn't working. If ACN isn't working, there's something, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So if ACN isn't working, there's a whole lot of other crap in your life that isn't working because it's the way you operate in life. You learn how to sustain and maintain, but you haven't learned how to elevate. So you woke up today. God gave you a new day to figure out how to create the new future you. He's like, hey, yesterday was the education. Today is the payday. I gave you the education. You've been in this past 90 days, six months, a year. You got the education. 
Are you tired of going to school? I'm here for you when, we, when you're ready to go to work. I've already given you the education. That's what these calls are for. You have the education. Here's the beautiful thing. You can hire yourself today and start getting a check in a week. <laughs> Why don't you hire yourself? You're the employer. The checks are waiting at ACN's home office. You, you're still going, uh, some of y'all aren't getting this. I get that. It's okay. Stay in the intern. We'll be here for you. If you need some more intern, take the next week. Work for free for the next week. Get some more education, what it costs to work for free and get information and knowledge and look for the right information. And You know, go ahead, do that. You know, be a scientist. Go ahead. You know, we'll still be here. We'll keep a light on. Motate. Okay. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> but when you decide to employ yourself, just know the checks are waiting on the other side of a week. A week. Seven days. Seven days. You can actually go to work, get a check in a week, and then create a habit out of it. See, success is just like failure. They're like Siamese twins and cousins. They both are a habit. Failure is a habit. Success is a habit. And we were the only creatures created on the planet that were given the power of choice. No other living creature on the planet was given the, the ordained power of choice to choose. I can choose to be a failure. I can choose to be a success. I can choose to work for free. I can choose to go get a check. I can choose the victim role. I can choose to be powerful. You get the choice. That's my segment, you guys. I love you guys. I'm complete, Mr. Thomas. You're muted, baby. I can't hear you. You got to unmute yourself, Mr. Thomas. Oh. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Can everybody, can we give Mr. Nelson a hand? Show him, give him some love today. Show him his first day back. He's the first first conversation yes. with us. And uh, I want to thank you, my friend, for, for coming on here and sharing with what to do, what to say, what not to say. Sharing that letter from the FTC so people know how serious we are because we're trying to protect the goose that laid the golden egg for all of us in a time like this. And what to, don't just talk about, what. and I didn't call it whatever it is, I call it a situation. So be careful with your wording. And love on people. If they see the opportunity, they'll join in. Talk more about residual income. That is a blessing. <laughs> so everybody, right. tomorrow morning, we'll be back tomorrow morning. Let's see, what's tomorrow? Oh, my God, no. Oh, tonight at 6 o'clock, happy hour. Everybody come on back with your glass of libation for the 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Coast time. We'll have happy hour, and I think we're going to celebrate and sing happy birthday to Mr. Brian Baker today at 6 o'clock. Nice. So come on back with your drink, your soda, your whatever you want to bring back at 6 o'clock p.m. We'll be singing happy birthday, Mr. Nelson. We'd love to yeah. have you back at 2 at 6 o'clock It'll be my pleasure. All right. We'll, we'll have sync happy birthday. So let me let me see that rascal. Where is he at on here? I know he's on here. Yeah, he's holding up his sign here. saying, I want to argue for my birthday. <laughs> I want to. Let's see. Where is he? I, I know he's on here somewhere. I got to so see much. somebody. Because yeah. I got I got I got I got to put the food on in a few minutes uh, to get ready for him. Hey, Jack. Yeah, and I, there he is. I just unmuted him. Brian, right, talk up, right. talk up, Bree. Uh, yeah, um, I'm bringing my fork and my serviette too. <laughs> <laughs> so I will see Mr. Baker. I got I got to go to. I got to. I got to go to Sam's get Club. Bro. Ready to go for him. Go to Sam's Club and load up. We gonna eat. Man. <laughs> That boy could eat. That boy could eat. Let me tell you something. Every time the restaurant see him coming, they close the door. <laughs> He's not allowed to go to smorgasbords. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, cook, I'm gonna cook lunch for him in about two hours. I gotta get, I got everything ready to go. Everything's marinated, ready to go. And then tonight at six o'clock, everybody come on back, Mr. Nelson as well. And we're gonna sing Happy Birthday to him tonight at six o'clock at Al's Happy Hour. You know, we had a happy hour before we give air hugs, but tonight. At six o'clock, right back here. It's happy hour. Last last Friday night, we went two hours. Mm -hmm. It was two hours long. It was great. So tonight, uh, he wants an RD for his birthday. All right, talk to your organization about that. Maybe they can pop an RD between now and then. There you <laughs> go. And don't forget tomorrow at one o'clock and three o'clock presentation, one through eight. Sunday, one o'clock, three o'clock presentation with Orrin Solomon will be joining us. And then tomorrow night at six, I'll be doing a leadership at six, part two. 
And then Sunday night at 6, a product training with Mr. Bree Clement with Spear. We have Spear on the call here. So God bless everybody. Have a great day. We'll see everybody at uh, at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Mr. Baker, I'll see you at noon for lunch. And we'll be back tonight at 6 o'clock with your libations, your wine, your whatever you want to bring with you. What's that? Well, not if I see you first. <laughs> God bless you. God bless everybody. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Yay!